I would just like to look back at uh, my role uh, in the course of the Ukrainian crisis and uh, what uh, then uh, resulted in the uh, Minsk agreements. At the time, yeah, there was a whole configuration of events. There was the Maidan a revolution, a president who had been elected in Ukraine, uh, uh, Mr. Yushchenko, and uh, the Russian intervention in the Crimea carrying uh, great risks for Europe and for the world. Member states of G8, with the exception of Russia, uh, considered that it wasn't possible uh, to meet uh, at a summit which was uh, supposed to take place in Sochi uh, in the format of G8. With regards to Russia, we needed uh, to uh, give it a signal Con uh, understandable for everyone, including President Putin, that um, uh, uh, that the uh, attachment of uh, the Crimea to Russia could not be uh, accepted by the international community, and therefore uh, uh, this couldn't take place uh, without uh, international consent. Given that there was no contact uh, between the key uh, G8 countries and Russia, there was no under mutual understanding. So we took part in an important event, uh, which was uh, the anniversary of the uh, disembarkation, which was uh, planned for uh, uh, June, and it was my task to uh, determine the list of uh, uh, invited parties. So it had to do with the liberation of France, so all the parties involved uh, needed to be invited. And the question arose, uh, what about Russia, which didn't uh, take part in the uh, uh, liberation of France uh, in uh, 1944 directly. But the courage of the Russian people and the Red Army uh, on the Eastern Front had, of course, contributed uh, to the uh, defeat of Nazi Russia. So, uh, Nazi Germany, sorry. So, uh, especially Angela, uh, with, in consultation with Angela Merkel, uh, I consulted the Russian President, uh, Mr. Putin, but also President Poroshenko, who had just been elected President of Ukraine. So uh, this uh, double invitation uh, gave the opportunity uh, to have the Russian and the Ukrainian uh, presidents uh, present to the, together. Now, Mr. Putin accepting the invitation to uh, these celebrations uh, was aware that the newly elected uh, Ukrainian president uh, would be there as well as an official guest, although he didn't recognize uh, the legality of his uh, election. So this uh, meeting, uh, b uh, four-party meeting, uh, took uh, place uh, in the format of uh, the presidents of uh, Ukraine, Russia, uh, Chancellor of Germany and myself uh, at a dinner. And this meeting gave birth to the uh, birth of the so-called Normandy format. Uh, so, uh, following this, we had the process of uh, discussions and, negoti and negotiations to find a um, way to a way out of the crisis uh, linked uh, to the uh, annexation of the Crimea by Russia. 
this, uh, of course, uh, could be uh, challenged by other um, parties, other countries, like uh, especially the United States, which ought to have uh, played a role in this process. But President uh, Obama decided that it was uh, up to the Europeans to find a solution or uh, to uh, assist um, um, those concerned in finding such a solution. And of course Poland uh, could have uh, shared this uh, preoccupation of uh, 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 finding it suitable for itself uh, to participate in the process. But uh, following dialogue, it was decided that especially it was uh, up to France and Germany as the initiators to assure European consent on this. Uh, hence the Normandy format. Uh, it enabled also uh, to sign a ceasefire on September, in September 2014 um, and at a NATO meeting uh, of the um, heads of uh, governments and states uh, to ratify this process. But then uh, Military activities, combats uh, re emerged uh, with uh, numerous victims. So we uh, repeated our efforts, and Angela Merkel realized that by the end of 2014 we were able <coughs> to uh, re initiate our initiative, relaunch it. Uh, 